Good morning. It has been 90 days since I started studying A Course in Miracles with Aaron Abke and Mark Anthony Lord and the incredible Living the Course community online. We've been doing sessions every morning and doing the homework during the afternoons and evenings, and things have started to sink in. It's been a really tough 90 days. My way of being has not wanted to let go, uh, and things have started to change, though. Things have started to sink in, and I want to tell you about a couple of the aspects that are unfolding for me, as promised. The first thing that I've started to notice and that has started to really change me is that there are two ways to see this world and to see this existence. The first is the way that I've always seen things. I am a Brandon Bosch. I am separate from that tree. I am separate from those birds. And this is the vision of the ego. This is how the ego sees the world. The ego is a wonderful computer program that runs on this hardware of my body that tells me to watch out for that tiger over there, to make sure I get the, the right amount of food and I can work my way up the ladder to secure the, you know, the healthy life that I want to live. And for many, many generations, thousands and thousands of years, this has been extremely helpful for humanity to evolve with. The ego has been integral to our evolution. But, you know, as we are moving along in our evolution, there is a, another way to see the world. As the ego sees things as separate and fearful, we need to fear things, control things, be the masters of our reality. Consciousness sees things as one, the eyes of oneness, connection, acceptance. And this is a whole lot to grok. This is not an easy thing to come to here. I don't expect you to just hear it and get it, because I certainly didn't. But the idea is that everything is connected. And yeah, we've been studying this with science for over 100 years. We've known this in quantum mechanics. Things are connected even at incredible spooky action at a distance and this quantum entanglement. But we can see things just naturally in our world too. If that sun were to stop shining, it's very far away. It's not me, right? But if it were to stop shining, I would be dead. If the plankton in the ocean and the floor of the ocean weren't creating chlorophyll, we wouldn't have anything to breathe and to make food with. We are separate, but somehow connected, interrelated. But the connection goes beyond that. Imagine this analogy. In the ocean, there are all these waves cresting. Imagine that I'm a wave cresting for a short period of time but I don't know it's short. This is my whole life is this wave here. I'm looking around at the other waves, thinking like, oh, that wave's not as tall as me. It's not cresting quite as nicely as I am. Oh, that other wave over there, it's such a weak wave. I am the greatest wave, or, oh, I'm not the greatest wave. Look at those other big waves over there. They are doing such a great job, and I'm over here, this weak little wave, comparing myself. Well, little do I know is this wave that I'm actually just water, and I shortly will go back into the ocean and become one with all the other water, and then crest again as another wave. I really like this analogy because it shows me that everything is just energy manifesting as a body, as a spirit here for a short period of time, but it's actually just the same energy, all one ocean. Really, really have started to integrate this, this concept to where it's actually starting to affect the way that I see the world. I'm starting to have more compassion for things, more understanding for others. And the way that I'm, I'm also conceptualizing this is that I'm seeing that everything since the beginning of time is all a downstream domino effect. An explosion happens and it starts these other explosions and downstream from that planets start to form and universe or Galaxies start to form. All the things, the trillions and trillions of events that have ever happened have led me to be right here, right now, making this video. And have led you to be watching this video. And we are all doing exactly what the events before us 
have pushed us to do. Yes, this is determinism, but I think that it really makes a lot of sense and it feels logical to me to think that everything that I'm doing has been pushed. Like, I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't think it was the best thing for me to do right now. And understandably, you know, the person robbing that bank over there wouldn't be doing so if he didn't think it was the best thing for him to do. So I can start to feel compassion for other people that are doing horrible things or even just nominal bad things or things that I don't agree with because that's just the best they know how to do with all the inputs that have ever, ever been pushing on them. And to me, that just gives me a lot of peace and calm to just be like, hmm, he's just doing the best that he can. A lot of understanding. But what I've come to understand through Aaron Abke's teachings is that if one can notice that we are a product of all these happenings before us, we can actually create a meta-consciousness to connect to consciousness and recognize that, oh, I'm reacting to all these things. Now, having recognized that, I get to choose. And this is free will. And that's very interesting to me. With the meta-consciousness, I can actually choose a real, maybe even uninfluenced decision. I don't know. Trying that on. It's a big one. But from that, I've also started to recognize what is available for me. The other day, I had my birthday. And I woke up at 6 a.m. deep in a sleeping pill that I'd taken to make sure that I got good rest for my birthday because I wanted to have a big day. And I was so groggy. I could, couldn't even stand. I was so in the sleeping pill. And if, you know, if you wake up in the middle of a sleeping pill and you're in the wrong cycle, it can really stick with you. This thing lasted 16 hours. It was hell. I was so upset, ruining my birthday. But as I laid there in it, unable to go back to sleep, I started to re recite this lesson from the course from the day before, appropriately, as always. And the line was, miracles are available just beyond this this suffering, this story that things have to be a certain way, that my birthday needs to be without suffering, or I need to have a energetic, fun, big birthday. This is my story. This is what I'm attached to. And this is where my suffering comes if it doesn't happen the way that I want it to. And I can get upset with myself. I didn't do it the right way. I shouldn't have taken that pill. I was just doing the best I knew how to do in that moment. And so I started noticing that happiness, freedom, and peace, as the Course said, are, right, are available just beyond that story, just beyond that suffering. If I just look deep into the I am space, into the consciousness that is my real being, look beyond the story of what my body is feeling right, like right now and notice that peaceful, calm place. And I did. And it was blissful. I was laying there in total body suffering and blissful in my soul space. And that was a, a remarkable experience. And I also noticed that if I let it go, the story would come back. So I got that it's not this enlightenment concept is not some explosion moment for Buddha under a tree that happens once and then is you're enlightened for the rest of your life. It's a choosing in every moment. A choosing of the consciousness oneness reality versus the ego fear and separation reality. It's noticing the story and like a meditation coming back to oneness. And the faster we can do that, <laughs> the more blissful and peaceful this life is. So I started doing that on my birthday and man, did it improve my birthday. <laughs> Saved my ass, if you will. And uh, yeah, so thank you. <laughs> thank creator.
So that's where I'm at 90 days in. I'm sure, you know, the next three quarters of the year is going to be really interesting. Going to keep studying every day. And I'm so grateful to Aaron Abke, so grateful to Mark Anthony Lord, bringing very different perspectives, very, very different styles of teaching. And to all the people in the Living the Course community that have been so awesome to me, that have been writing me these incredible long responses to my desperate 7 a.m. Facebook posts, just totally struggling with these concepts. These people have written me these incredible stories that have really gone and given me their time and their focus and their love. And it has been so helpful, you know, to have this support and these loving people. I really, you know, I, I cherish this this time and this opportunity to study and to learn about love and oneness with all you wonderful people. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's let's do some more. Looking forward to it.